Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're reviewing the 2024 Acura RDX. Before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Jody Wilkinson Acura here in Salt Lake City, Utah, for giving me some time with this RDX. I'm going to include a link to their website in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. And then on a side note, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a turbocharged 2-liter 4-cylinder that goes through a 10-speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 21 around town and then 26 on the highway with power outputs being 272 horsepower and then 280 pound-feet of torque. Now, before we move forward with this review, I do want to mention, if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting with the hood, you guys can see how the lines kind of arc on either side. I think that looks really cool. And then popping down below, look at the headlight design that you guys can see how it's blacked out here off to the side. Parking sensors on the front, and then look at the grille, also dark in coloration. And you can see down below, also darker. And putting it all together, it definitely has a really cool sporty look. Cover on the side here, our tire wheel setup is 255, 45, 20 in the front and over in the rear. And you guys can see here with the wheels, you've got the metallic gray here, which contrasts very nicely to this red paint. And of course we have our A-Spec badge. Blacked out trim here at the bottom, and then notice the window trim is also darker. And then here's your full side view with the RDX. Now taking a look at the key fob, we have our lock and unlock function. We got the opening for the hatch, and then notice the Acura logo on the side and on the back. Now popping into the rear, you guys can see RDX here on the trunk liner. But yeah, decent amount of storage space. This is similar in size to like the Lexus NX, for example. And then make sure these latches to throw down the seats if you need even more storage. When you're all done, just press this button and that will lower the hatch right back down. Now take a look at the taillights. I like that design element there on the side. It looks really cool. And you can see all the badges here. Massive exhaust tips at the bottom. Parking sensors as well. And wrapping things up, let me know you guys think about the exterior design here on the RDX. Now take a look at the door panel, soft touch here at the top, and then you can see down below as well. And then I like the stitching here. Look at the speaker here for the sound system, that looks fancy. Now take a look at the seats, you can see perforated here, and then notice down the center as well, you got the stitching that goes around too. Legroom back here is really good, we also have a little storage pocket, some vents here in the back, USBs as well, and then headroom. Now take a look at the front door panel again, soft touch here at the top, and then you guys can see down below. And look at the stitching that goes across. All of our window controls here. We also have our adjustments for the mirrors, and then speaker for the ELS Studio 3D sound system. Memory seat function, and then there's a quick look at the mirrors. Now take a look at the front seat, just like the back with the design, like how it's perforated all down the center. Just leads to a really cool design. All of our power adjustments on the side, a spec badge. Look at those pedals there at the bottom. And then you guys can see here if the brake hold, parking sensor, stability control, and then that's for the safety tech. And then the steering wheel is manually adjustable. Now taking a look at the steering wheel, you guys can see soft touch here at the top and at the bottom. Also have the A-Spec badge right there. And then we got this nice perforated texture here on the side. Paddle shifters here on the back of the 10-speed. You got controls for like your adaptive cruise control, steering assist, volume voice command controls as well. And then you can see the regular stocks here on the back. Now taking a look at the gauge cluster, analog on either side, which I think looks really good. And then you have that center screen, which you can use to scroll through different bits of info on the car, pretty standard stuff. Um, and then there is a little change with some of the drive modes, as you can see. Now in reverse, we do have a backup camera here with trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel and resolution with it's pretty good. And then as for the rest of the infotainment system, first off, we've got the drive mode select. It's cool with the different modes that you can go through that the camera apparently doesn't want to uh, focus on. Um, but aside from that, everything's controlled via a keypad. Makes uh, fun sounds with the controls. It's not a touch screen, um, but I'd say overall functionality on it, it's, it's pretty easy to use, but functionality on my camera, pretty horrible. Anyways, soft touch here on the dash, and then you guys can see here on the side as well. And then look at this trim down below. I think that looks really good. And then the trim piece above it. And I guess while we're in this area, we'll open up the glove box here, just a button you press, and good storage inside. And then down below, you guys can see we've got analog controls here for stuff with the radio. You get your climb controls, heated and ventilated seats, drive mode select here, auto stop start. We get our little transmission selector here with all the buttons. And then you can see the keypad here with the wrist rest to 
control the infotainment system. And we have our storage area here, which um, I think is really practical because you got cup holders and then a little bit of extra storage. And then inside with the center console, you can see that whole setup. And by the way, you can cover this up if you want. So that little pad right there. But yeah, nice padding on top. And then there's more storage underneath with a wireless phone charging pad. So lots of practicality. And then up top, we have controls here for the panoramic center. Now here's a quick look at the window sticker. You guys can see all the standard equipment on that side. Base MSRP, 49,700. Um, after destination, paint, all that kind of stuff. 51,495 is the total MSRP on this. And let's see how it drives. Let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's visibility over the hood, both the mirrors, through the rest of the rear, and let us set off. Also, I'm impressed that even this area right here, actually this area is not, but this area up here is actually soft touch around like the stop start button and everything. Usually automakers will just throw a plastic chunk right there, so I think that's pretty cool they did that. Random, random thing. There's always things that I notice, and also like on the side of the seat here, even on the passenger side, it's still like leather trim. A lot of automakers will put a cloth insert here on the side, so like, there's random places where most automakers cheap out with materials and Acura hasn't, which I don't know. I think that's, I think that's very admirable. So just kind of my take on that. But anyways, outside of random talks of material use, so let's get up and move here in this RDX. Oh, engine's definitely got some good pep in its step right off the bat. Again, 10 speed automatic with you know almost 300 horsepower i mean it is quite impressive the figures yeah, tra and that's even sport mode so we're going to pop it into sport and then s so this is like the most aggressive mode actually we'll do manual too while we're at it shifts are very smooth So I do think that part is quite impressive so far. Um, seats are really comfortable too. I think they've done a good job with the seats. I like the dual material use. I think that's another nice feature here with the RDX. And, well, it's in automatic mode again, whatever. <laughs> this thing moves, it's quick. Actually, it wasn't in automatic mode. I guess that it just automatically shifted for first gear, but then didn't do... Strange. Strange. But yeah, anyways, it, I think it drives well. I, I like how this drives. It feels sporty. Um, and again, you got to think this competes against... I mean, at the price point this is at, yeah, like... You know... What, you're going you're gonna to be with the... Maybe the BMW X3, but the BMW X3, I feel like it gets... it's. Well, I guess you could kind of get one close to this price. It's, this is closer in price to like a BMW X1, just because BMW's price, it, all the German automakers have more, they're more expensive. Um, but you know, Lexus NX, that one's gonna be closer in price to this. Uh, so here's kind of what my, my thoughts are, is first off, I think the fit and finish and build quality with this is really solid, like it feels very well built. So I think that's, I think that's a, definitely an advantage with Acura. And I love how this drives. It's, it's very, very sporty feeling. You can tell that that's what Acura's focus has been. This does not like to be in first gear. <laughs> it instantly just shifts straight from first to second. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, as I was saying is, I, I think definitely like a sporty kind of focus with this, more so than the NSX. But not as sporty as I would say, like the BMW is still sportier with how that drives. But this is really close. But the thing that's really appealing to this over BMW is like the reliability aspect, right? You know that this is going to be less expensive to maintain and it's gonna keep running for longer. Whereas the BMW, you, you, the old saying is you lease one, you don't buy one. And whereas with the RDX, right, you definitely could buy one because again, the reliability is much, much better. But anyways, let me know your thoughts on the RDX. And let me know what you guys think about this compared to the Lexus, the BMW, Audi, Mercedes, all that. But I think 
this has a lot of features for the money, drives really well, great performance, uh, again, reasonably priced, and it's an Acura, so it's reliable. So I think that there's a lot to love about this.